you know, there's surely not enough time in the day to do all the things you want. And there's certainly not enough time in a weekend to do all the things you want. I wish weekends were longer. Anyway, we're back with more of this game. I'm pushing myself to do more. I don't- I'm not tired, so it's okay. My girl! <clears throat> oh, this room. It's been too long. It hasn't changed in the slightest, though. It's been some six months, hasn't it? <clears throat> That's a long time for things to stay so... familiar. I didn't know when you might return, and I wanted everything to be as you left it. <laughs> oh, but it has been some six months. It's true. So is your father all right, Susie? What happened? My father? Yes, Professor Mikotoba. I mean, it was half a year ago, but that's why you went back to Japan. Because of the telegram you received saying he'd fallen ill with a very high fever or for some unknown reason. That's right, so I was surprised to learn you'd be coming back so soon. Surprised, but happy. What if he's dead? What if he died and he gave, she gave back? <laughs> that is awkward. I think I wrote about it in my letter to you. That it was all a trick. My father is in fine health. And I'm obviously very relieved. About that. Well, we're all delighted to have you back. It was quite by accident that I've been able to return to Europe, actually. It's because of a very grand conference called the International Forensic Science Symposium. Oh! The International Forensic... The same symposium Lord Strongheart mentioned. Anyway, I've arrived safe and sound, and all that matters is that I'm here now. After all, I haven't yet fulfilled my promise to you, Iris. Oh! You must tell us everything that happened while you were back in Japan. Of course, I shall. And there's one other thing. Something you wrote in your letter that particularly grabbed my attention. About you know who? About Kazuma. What letter? I know. I'll tell you all that I can. Let's fucking talk, Coral. Let's fucking dish the, 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 the dish the sip. When I first arrived back in Japan, I really thought I'd never be allowed to return to Britain. But curiously, after that awful trial of the Supreme Court, the father's mood changed entirely. That awful trial? Oh, yes. For the murder of Giselle Brett. Or Giselle Brett. Oh, you dressed as a man then, didn't you, Susie? Oh, yeah! Oh, well, yes. Since women are forbidden in the courtroom, I had no choice. Wow, amazing! I wish I'd seen it! Don't you, Luna? Um, yes, I, I suppose so. She could literally put on my uniform and show it to us. I'm not even wearing it right now. I want to play at being a lawyer now. I can wear a false mustache, maybe. I don't think any mustache would hide the fact that you're just ten years old, Iris. There's something else I've been wanting to ask you, Mr. Sato. It's about the real reason why Professor Mikotoba summoned you back to Japan. You said in your letter it was something to do with that convict's loot we found in Mr. Natsumi's lodging. The 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 collar. That's right. The very large dog collar we found with the B emblem on it. It seems Mr. Datsume included a drawing of the collar in the report he submitted about this time in Britain. I understand that when Father saw the report, he turned as white as a sheet. Why would that be, then? Father came to Britain himself, of course. The study. It was some time ago now, but he stayed for six years. I can only imagine that something must have happened during that time. But if, you if he refused to tell me what it was, then I intend to find the answer for myself. And I've decided that I, for one, won't keep any more secrets. You go, girlfriend. Oh, Susie! That's a very meaningful look Sato-san's giving Iris there. Oh, right! Fuck, what was it? The hound dog thing? The story that Iris wrote? That had the name that she never released, but Sasato knew about it. We're gonna find out about that, right? I forget what it was called. The Blood of the Hound's Dog? Lord Strongheart mentioned something about that symposium, too. I think he said that investigative authorities from 40 different countries would attend. Yes, and from Japan, my father and Judge Jikoku have been invited. Oh, your dad's here, too? It's something of an honor, I believe. 
Wait, Judge Jikoku? Like the guy? B Grandpa? Uh, the guild? Well, Professor Mikotoba is the leading expert in forensic medicine in our country, after all. But, who's the other person you mentioned? A judge, did you say? Yes, His Excellency Judge Seishiro Jikoku. You've met him. You've met him, Mr. Naruto. Last year, in the Supreme Court. You can't possibly have forgotten. He's literally the only judge we've seen in Japan. That terrible trial of yours when you were accused of murder. Ah, yes, I try to, to think of that as a positive turning point in my life these days. Gilf. Well, it was Judge Shigoku who presided over that trial. He's gonna be a bad guy, I know it. If I'm perfectly honest, I'd be happy never to see that man's face again in my life. Oh, well anyway, as father was invited to the symposium, he agreed to be returning to Britain too. He won't actually arrive until next month, but, well, I couldn't wait. Oh, okay. So I pleaded with him, and in the end he agreed for me to go on ahead. Wow, that's just, okay. Yes, about the symposium. It seems as though Lord Strongheart has put in an awful lot of work to make it happen. It's obviously very important. I believe it is, yes. As I understand, Lord Strongheart organized the entire event himself. Jesus. I think he's hoping that by achieving exceptional results, he'll get the job of Attorney General. What is he now? What? The most senior position in the British justice system. Who is that now? What is his position now? And who is in the Attorney General position now? Let me go back to R. What is his position? The Lord Chief Justice. Ah. Okay. So who's the Attorney General now? Is he gonna die in this game? He's, ho he's hoping to use his power to create the world's finest policing institution. That's what Father said anyway. Apparently, it's Lord Strongheart's lifelong ambition. Does Professor, Mik Does Professor Mikotoba know Lord Strongheart personally then? I wonder. Actually, Lord Strongheart gave me a long speech all about this very subject only yesterday. But I sort of lost the will to live early on and didn't really listen to much of it. <laughs> Jesus. How trying for you. To sell Brett. The woman whose unforgivable actions ended in me being wrongly accused of a crime I didn't commit. She also killed Ayushi's papa, the murder of Dr. John H. Wilson. Yes, Giselle Brett. That's a name I won't forget for as long as I live. The extraordinary thing is, oh, it seems it's a name we should all forget. Sorry? Since the incident, our government intelligence services have been investigating Miss Brett. But it turns out that an English woman by the name of Giselle Brett didn't actually exist. Her name is not- her real name is not Giselle Brett. D didn't exist? How can that be? It was a pseudonym. Her real name was Shin. She wasn't a visiting student either. That was a front. Shin! Isn't that the name of the one person in the- in the first game, the last- the, the last part of the game where they were reading off an, a list of names that was in the- the secret message in Japanese Braille? A front? Who on earth was she then? Miss A. Shin. Her name is literally all our intelligence services have been able to ascertain about her. Nobody knows why, or even how, she came to be in Japan. It's a complete mystery. But, but that makes no sense. It's no easy task to be accepted as a foreign student anywhere. What could the woman have been up to? I'm afraid I really don't know. The only thing we can be sure of is that she has some business in our country that we don't yet understand. And now she's been killed. While all the questions surrounding her existence remain unanswered. I'm afraid so. A Shin. Who on earth was she? And why do I feel as though I've heard that name before somewhere? Yeah, you know it. It's because... So then all the people in that... All the people in that list of names has been accounted for. Because I thought Shin was going to be the guy who betrayed, um... Betrayed, uh, blah, 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 what's his name? Baroque. Barak? Barak. Barak. Ben Lord Van Zeeks, whatever. Because he had mentioned someone about betraying him. But it's not, apparently. Shin is this white lady. <clears throat> After my friend Ray's trial, the reporter who actually killed Miss Brett said something very strange. Oh, God. 
Oh god, what was your voice? I know the truth. I know you had a hand in what went on. In that visiting student's fate. Nobody here in Japan knows anything about it. They don't know the guy never made it to England. That he died on that steamship. And that he'll never... Obviously, I couldn't ask him to elaborate at the time. But later, I visited the man in his prison cell and asked him what he was going to say about Kazuma-sama. What did you learn? After he died on the voyage to Great Britain, his body should have been unladen at the port of Hong Kong and passed into the care of the consular staff there. Should have been. Well, it turns out that his body never arrived. It just disappeared. What? Cosmo's body vanished? Our government tried to cover the fact up, it seems. They erected a grave on the cliffs by our hometown. Except, Cosmo sama isn't there. Did, did Professor Mikotoba know about this? Yes, it would seem that he did. What a bitch. But he didn't tell me. They're still investigating what happened to Cosmo sama's body as we speak. I, I just don't believe it. What is this acute feeling of apprehension I have all of a sudden? Uh, Kazuma, where are you? Thinking back now, some of the things that happened on that SS Buria were definitely strange. I mean, after he died, we never saw his body again, did we? Could it be? Could it be? That he's actually still alive? Stop it, Mr. Narodo! It's too much to bear! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Just thinking about the possibility pains me. So very much. I mean, if he's still alive... That would, that's a good thing, right? Cast your mind back for a moment, Mr. Narodo. <clears throat> when Cosmos someone was discovered, Mr. Sholmes was there, wasn't he? And he definitely examined the body. I remember it clearly. Clear, 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 clearly. Oh, you're, you're right. Is he up to something? Does he? Well, he's always known something that we don't know, but is that man up to something suspicious? So if Kazuma hadn't been dead at all, it would mean that Mr. Shomps had lied to us. But there's no reason why he would possibly have done such a thing. Uh, I suppose that's true, yes. Holmes, are you hiding something from me? He's clearly hiding something. He's clearly hiding something from me. But is he fucking hiding more things from me? An idea that he might still be alive somewhere. It wants to fill me with hope, but I can't let it, because if it turns out to not be true, then I'd be back at the bottom of that awful pit of despair again. I'm, I'm terrified of what that might do to me. Mrs. Sato. I know she's given the idea the thought she deserves. It's the Sato song we're talking about, after all. So I probably shouldn't push it now. Oh, it's okay. Oh, now what? Let's examine the room. We have, we have it. Why not? Why the hell not? Let's make a pot of tea. You have water gently boiling on the stove, I see. It feels wrong somehow if I can't hear the water bubbling away. And we have plenty of locks. It's not like we have to worry about paying for gas. It's important to open the window for fresh air when the fire's burning, though. You can't keep it closed just because it's cold outside. It could be a matter of life and death. Avoiding the freezing winter air is a matter of life and death, too, if you ask me. Oh, well. Perhaps a nice cup of tea will warm you up later. You see? I've been keeping my desk beautifully covered in papers as always. You really must tidy it all up, Mr. Narahodo. No more excuses. But Mr. Sato, the way I see it, all these papers building up on my desk like this are a reminder of my wonderfully diverse daily life. I'd like to leave them as they are, so I never forget how lucky I am to have such varied experiences. <laughs> in that case, you should definitely you should you should definitely have a thorough tidy. Then you'll be able to see your papers building up all over again and feel that joy renewed. 
still can't beat her in an argument, even though I'm the lawyer here. Hey, if she were a boy, she'd be she'd be the best lawyer. That was taken when I left London, wasn't it? I have the same photograph on display in my room at home in Japan, you know? I wondered if we'd all be together again, to be honest. Oh, I know. So did I. <laughs> I can't stand it, you two are so cute! But here we are, and I'm quite sure there's a reason we've been brought back together. I can't deny that having Sasato back again it makes me feel as though fate has something big in store for us. Mmm, Daruma. I see your Daruma still has only one eye filled in. Well, we agreed that it's something we'd do together, didn't we? We could do it right now if you like. I'd be happy with that. Uh, I'd rather like the anticipation. Uh, I'd rather like the anticipation, I think, Mr. Narahodo. Oh, dang it. I wanted to see them have the moment of them filling the eye together. Dang it. Tea. Oh, I'm so looking forward to making you some tea again, Mr. Narahodo. Would you think I wouldn't like, given that I'm not keen on bitter flavors? But it is Sato-san's tea. And it's amazing what a little cake or something on the side can do. I would dearly love to serve you some sort of Japanese sweet along your side your matcha green tea. But I suppose that's simply not possible given how long we've been staying here in London. Well, I do like the little chocolates you put in my tea. They go wonderful. Chocolate? And tea? Oh, Mr. Narhodo, you would, wouldn't you? That gives me a warm glow inside for some reason. <laughs> Oh my god, Iris is here! I'm sorry, we've been... You've been just hanging in here. I forgot about her. I left your desk completely untouched, Mrs. Sato. So it'll be ready for you for whenever you return. It's beautifully clean. There isn't a speck of dust on it anywhere. You've been cleaning in my absence, Mrs. Narodo. Whatever next? Well, I couldn't allow my great assistant's desk to sit there gathering dust, could I? It really is exactly as it was when I left. I'm so touched. But sadly, your desk is also exactly as it was too. Yeah, well, that's how it should be after all. <laughs> oh dear, I'd forgotten how that clean cut smile can be so disarming. <laughs> Can't stand you too. Your room through there should be exactly as you left it. I've still never been inside. I've never been invited. <laughs> of course not. Only Iris is allowed in my room. No doubt I'll be hearing you two giggling away in there again then. Oh! That's so good! <laughs> it must be about a year ago now. I wrote a really long story based on some of my father's own notes. It's about one of Hurley's greatest exploits. I called it the Hound of the Baskervilles. Oh! I, 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 I was close. But then Mr. Sholmes forbade you from publishing it and put the manuscript somewhere nobody could get their hand on it. Right, there's a whole case about that. Someone died for it. So nobody knows anything about it apart from Hurley and I. But for some reason... You know the title of it, didn't you, Susie? Are we gonna hear about it now? Are you gonna talk about it now? Oh! Oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. Right, and then everyone was like, oh, How did you know? You wouldn't tell me. How you'd come to know of it. Yes, but I made you a promise that I would explain one day, didn't I? Is today the day? Are you gonna do it? I think it's time. Oh! Let's fucking go! I'm only sorry I'd had to keep it from you for so long, Iris. Fucking go, let's go. It was completely by accident that I came to know the title of your manuscript, Iris. It was a short while before we left Japan. I was cleaning Father's study, and I saw something on his writing desk. A large box of papers. There was a label affixed to the box that was written in English. It read, The Hound of the Baskervilles. What? My Baskerville story? Of course, I had no idea what it was at the time. But Father came in, and... Susato, what are you doing? Oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot, I, I forgot Mikotoba. What was her voice? Oh god. Oh, father! Did you look at those papers? No, I simply read the label, that's all. Well, put it out of your mind. Sorry? Forget that you ever saw it. And certainly don't tell anyone else about this. Do you understand? You shouldn't have had it out in the open then, you dumbass! 
I also realized his voice is the same voice that I gave the judge. <laughs> but what was Iris's manuscript doing in Japan? Sholmes shared it. I have no idea. But when I heard Iris mention the word Baskerville that day, the title just slipped out. I would have never guessed that it was an unpublished account of one of Mr. Sholmes' exploits. Did Sholmes share what Mika told him? When I returned to Japan, I asked Father to explain, but he refused to answer any of my questions, and there was no signs of the big box in his office. That's really all I know about it. Dang it! I have no doubt that Father has a good reason for being so secretive about it, but still. I've made up my mind to explain myself to both of you. Well, thank you for being so honest, Susie. So now we have to go up to Sholmes and be like, what the fuck, dog? It was just us. It was between the two of us. Why are you sharing my shit? So, Mr. Naruhodo, I'm ready to start investigating if you are. I've committed every detail about the case to memory. Oh, wow. And Iris has told me about the disturbing happenings at the Waxwork Museum as well. So you're fully abreast of the situation already, Mr. Sato. I'd expect nothing less, to be honest. I would think our first port of call should be to investigate this Mr. Drebber. The engineer responsible for building the elaborate machine that was used to affect his extraordinary crit. Whatever. Yes, a conjurer of sorts, by the sound of it. Well known in the fields of science and magic. Oh god, then we need to go and arrest him! Uh, well, well, yes. He must know the truth behind this case. So I agree we should really do need to find the man. Hmm. Sounds like it's a case of tracking someone down. Which is a job for the police! Or a great detective! Oh! I always want to guess who she might be thinking of. We don't have much time, so we need to get started straight away, I think. Good idea! Well, best of luck then! Oh? You're not coming today. I'm going to Brixton Road shortly for the herb market. But let me know. But let me know later how you got on, won't you? <clears throat> I'm sorry, Iris. You dressed up so cutely, and you can't even come with us. That was a little abrupt. The pull of the herb market must be strong. Maybe he just wants us to be alone together. Oh. Oh. Our lovely little office. What wonderful memories I have of this place. Oh, Mr. Sholmes' suit is just as it was when I left. Do you know I don't believe we've been this place for some time? I don't believe we have business here at this moment. Oh, it's crossed out. We can't visit Barak! Ah! Uh, where do we want to go? We want to go to... Uh, what? I'm assuming there's nothing in Sholmes' suite, but we'll go down the list, I guess. Nope. Okay. What about the Chief Justice's office? Who that bitch? Oh, who's that standing beside Lord Strongheart? I wonder. I've never seen her before. <clears throat> oh god, he noticed us! Ah, a young champion of the court. You had some success this morning, I understand. And you've thrown the entire government into disarray as a result. It's not my fault! Oh, you mean because of Professor Harrowbridge's experiment? Sham science being demonstrated at London's Great Exhibition. The country's been made to look foolish, and now politicians are scrambling to respond. I'm just doing my job, man. Lord Van Deese is in Whitehall as we speak, giving an emergency briefing. Oh dear. I, uh, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. None of this is your responsibility. The government is entirely to blame for having been taken in. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. The special dispensation that prevents investigations at the scene will be another later today. Oh really? Damn. Once that happens, my forensic investigative team will move in and deal with that scrap metal in no time. It's scrap metal now, is it? She looks tired. Until later then, Lord Strongheart. Do I like her? Do I like her? I love her outfit. Her outfit's pretty slick. It's slick. <coughs> yes, thank you. 
Oh, she, her hair is like similar to Bayonetta's hair. Just nowhere near as tall. Um, who is that? My wife. Oh. Ah! Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I recognize that name! I always kept re I always kept reading the coroner's name. That was Dr. Courtney Sith, Scotland Yard's esteemed chief coroner. She's leading the forensic investigations team's handling of this case. She was just delivering her report about the victim, in fact. Oh, I see. About Mr. Asma. Following the outcome of the trial earlier, I asked the coroner's office to reevaluate its findings. Oh, word? We got I don't have time to tell you what she concluded. If you want to know, you'll have to ask her directly. What? You can find her in the forensic laboratory. God damn it. Ah, uh, right. Now, what were you here to see me about? I don't know. I just wanted to say sup. I can give you 7 minutes and 39 seconds of my time. So he's not running quite so spectacularly late anymore. 7 minutes? What? What is there for me to talk about? Oh, the symposium? Maybe? Oh no. What exactly is the forensic investigations team that you mentioned before? The British Empire's police force must become the most exemplary in the world. For that to happen, it's imperative that we embrace forensic science and everything it has to offer. I first created the forensic investigative team a year ago now, unofficially of course, to pave the way. Goodness, a year ago! At next month's symposium, I intend to present the results of their work to the world. Once I do that, the House of Lords will be powerless to oppose the creation of a full-scale forensics division. And once that happens, the position of Attorney General will be mine, and criminals will suffer dearly. I get the feeling we're gonna find out he killed the man. Oh, what do you mean? For too long, these scoundrels have made a mockery of our legal system with false evidence and bribes. But London scum is about to be rounded up and burnt in the fires of hell. I intend to see it personally. By creating the finest police force the world has ever known. To protect our honor and our future. Look at those eyes. He means every word. That's why he's using Barak to play the Reaper so that people will be afraid and stop fucking causing crime and shit. He's evil. Dr. Stith is an extremely reliable coroner. When I officially establish the forensic division at the Scotland Yard, she will run it as my right-hand woman. Cool. Now then, speaking of the symposium, Miss Mikotoba? Oh, yes, my lord. Your father should be on the high seas as we speak, making his way here to represent the Empire of Japan. Yes, that's right. I understand he will arrive at the beginning of next month. Are you acquainted, Lord Strongheart? With Professor Mikotoba, I mean. It was many years ago now, but yes, I remember Dr. Mikotobo very well. Oh, let's go. Dish the dirt. If my memory serves, it was some 15 years ago now that your father came to Britain as a visiting student. It was the year I was born. So yes, 16 years ago in fact. Man really just had... Her, man really had his wife give birth to just your goddamn daughter and he's like, Peace! I ain't raising this fucking kid. I'm out of here. <clears throat> Mikotobo was a young practitioner of forensic science and Jikoku accompanied him as a young, promising judge. The punk to, to put the what is that? That's a word? Punctiliousness. Punk? Punctiliousness. The punctiliousness. <laughs> How do you pronounce that word? <coughs> the punctiliousness. Punctiliousness? Punk punctiliousness. Maybe. And politeness of the Japanese at the time impressed us greatly. Not that I wish to imply impoliteness or carelessness on your part in any way. It's fine. I didn't think that you were. I mean, it's fine. We probably are. Dr. Mikotoba studied forensics at one of London's largest hospitals. St. Siners, if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Sith was also there then, as it happens. Really? She looks, she looks so young. Uh, well, she doesn't look so young, but she looks younger. Then Dr. Sith knows my father, does she? She was a young medical assistant at the time, so I doubt their paths cross regularly. But I've no doubt that they knew each other superficially. After all, Dr. Mikotoba was here studying his subject for some six years in total. Six years? It's a long time to be studying abroad, isn't it? Yeah, because your dad was stupid. I lived with my grandma, grandma. I lived with my grandmother in those years. 
So he left his newly born daughter behind. And went overseas for six whole years. Oh, did your mom die? It was a rather turbulent time at home. Oh. Perhaps father wanted a reason to get away. If that's the reason, no! You don't leave your goddamn kid behind just because you want to get away. You have a responsibility, mister! Idiot. What do you mean? Why? Oh well. Clearly, something was going on at the time. Idiot. I wanted to ask you about Lord Van Zeeks, actually. I heard that his older brother was killed some years ago by a mass murderer known as the Professor who targeted nobles and no royalty. Is that- Huh? Well, I don't remember this! I, I have a vague memory of Hairbrain bringing up the dead brother thing. I don't remember this Professor. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, oh, oh! I remember! We, we learned about this in the Wax Museum thing, right? That was when we learned about it? Uh, from... Uh, the, 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 cause, cause the Wax Museum is currently featuring an ex exhibition that's like all like serial murderers or something? Serial killers? I think... I just don't remember the, the professor part. That threw me off. You Japanese are a thorough lot. You've done your research well. Yes. And you could say it was that very incident that gave rise to the Reaper. What? Why? When his brother, Clint Van Dijk's, was murdered. It was just after young Barak had graduated from the University of London and became a prosecutor. When obvious criminals who managed to evade conviction in court started disappearing. Rumors quickly spread throughout the capital. Londoners started to say that whatever Barak Van Dijk's went, the ghost of his dead brother wasn't far behind. Well, that's stupid. Oh my word! So... Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper. It's the ghost of his brother? I, whatever makes you sleep- Whatever helps you sleep at night. Ever since that time, he became a very aloof figure in London's legal circles. Ah, what, what, why do we fade the black? Oh, yes. Lord Strongheart. I guess we're gonna- <laughs> I guess it's signified that we were done talking to him. Go ahead. It's about Professor Harebrain's experimental machine. We'd like your permission to examine the remains, if possible. Are you well versed in science, then? Not in the slightest. In fact, you could say I was barely aware of the subject at all until recently. <gasps> well, the special dispensation legally preventing investigation of the machine is currently being annulled. Within a few hours, Dr. Sith's team of forensic experts will begin their own investigation. But I suppose until then, there's no harm in you looking at the wreckage, as long as you touch nothing. Thank you. Being able to look at it is better than nothing. And I'll be able to see it too. Epic. Your time is up. You'll have to excuse me now, I'm afraid. My next engagement called. We are extremely sorry to have troubled you when you are so busy, my lord. God, God. Okay. I have important matters to attend to in preparation for the symposium, you understand. As long as you gave us the permission to do the things, I'm good. Get out. Get out of your office. <laughs> Okay, let's go to prison. 